Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Mechanics Brewery, because I kinda need some practice since my recent videos aren't exactly demanding in animating anyway in today's episode, Leiden Frost, from Kioratix Advancements, by Creator Unreal. Leiden Frost effect is a phenomenon in which a liquid in contact with a surface that's far hotter than its boiling point will cause part of it to instantly evaporate, forming a vapor cushion that lets it hover on the surface rather than boil on it. It can be utilized to tell if your skillet is hot enough to cook, or to protect yourself from molten metal or molten lava. Science Named after the phenomenon, Leiden Frost isn't just going to keep the heat away from itself, but to the point that its foes will be frozen solid. However, let's put that aside for now and talk about Kioratix advancements instead. While on the surface, Kioratix advancements seems like your usual core prostates, in reality it's more like a grand university that sells its scientific projects. Its employees are its students, and those in senior positions are its instructors. And any pilots that want their licenses have to pass the terror of tests and exams. The advancement's goal is to educate everyone on the scientific nature of the world, but if you can't pay the cost off in your lifetime, your children is going to continue studying in your place. With the sheer amount of tests they have conducted, it's no surprise that their mechs are experiments on their own, featuring strange technologies that can change the dynamic of a battlefield, and their core bonuses are just as odd, either keeping your mech cool or make your mech last a little longer. Bose-Einstein Reactor Immersion, keep you just above breaking point. Your lowest overheating dice will get a plus one, and only one unfortunately so if you get this, you fucked. And for once per scene, you get to ignore all difficulty and accuracy on one engineering check or save. Coronal Filamentation, Waste Heat Gets Wasted. Any excess heat that goes over your heat gauge, probably when you are overheating, is just completely gone. Your mech also gains plus 2 heat capacity. It's pretty good, if you are expecting to get hot real fast. Potentiokinetic servo modification, give you the third leg you always wanted. Your mech is immune to prone, gains resistance to fall damage, and fall damage is no longer armor piercing to your mech. Basically, you will never fall down hard ever again. Nanogu memory imprinting, fabricate the one thing you need, for once permission, pick a weapon or system with limited tag. It now gains the replenish tag, which is a fully homebrew tag that lets you replenish 1d6 limited charges per turn, by standing in a terrain full of font which is also another homebrew thing, plus 1 additional charges per turn for remaining on the terrain after the first turn, up to 1d6 plus 6 charges. Yeah this is gonna be completely useless if you don't take any license from a certain specific mech, also this core bonus only replenishes 1d3 limited charges instead of 1d6. Anyway, let's talk about Leiden Frost itself. So, looking at its stat, Leiden Frost has a below average health, but it has one armor to back it up. Its evasion is a touch lower from the average while its E defense is exactly on it. Its speed is decent for its size, which is standard. Its heat cap is rather ridiculous, repair cap is a bit too low, sensor range is good, and its save target is just amazing. As for its traits, it has two. First, Equilibrium, Leiden Frost loses one heat at the start of its turn. Second, Absolute Zero Reactor, when rolling overheating check, the number of dice is reduced by one to a minimum of zero. Basically, Leiden Frost has a lot less worries about heat than just about everything else, so you should focus on other stats instead. As for its weapon mounts, it has two, one flex and one heavy, along with six base system points. Onto its core power, Leiden Frost can activate Kioratix Advancement's zero Kelvin void coolant for boreal current. Upon activation with a quick action, Leiden Frost sucks in the heat from all selected targets on the battlefield, or range 50, clearing all their heat gauges and even recovering one reactor stress for them. In short, Leiden Frost can make its allies worry less about their heat levels too, a lot less in fact. As for the rest of its license, you get Snowstorm Launcher and Heat Sink Modification in the first section. Snowstorm Launcher Should I start using ice puns, is it even a good idea? Is that still recording? Good range, low damage, but you are definitely not going to use this weapon for its damage, because anything that gets hit by the missiles will lose 1d6 heat, and if the target has no heat or reduced to no heat, they must pass an engineering save or get slowed until the end of their next turn. Obviously, this is not going to work on targets that are rather hot, and you might have even helped them. Heat sink modification. Why do I feel like I said this exact name already, someone is going to get real confused about this. Basically, 
it's a weapon mod for any ranged weapon with higher class than auxiliary to decrease their heat cost by 1 to a minimum of 0. It sounds good, until you realize it costs 2 system point and it's basically useless for light and frost, so use it for something else instead. Aside from light and frost itself, you get snowman beacon and cryo fist in the second section. Snowman beacon. Basically that, after spending a limited charge to deploy it besides you with a quick action, that might not be written here, but it's written on here too. Anyway, you can then activate the beacon with another quick action, turning all space in burst 3 around the beacon, into a goddamn blizzard for 5 turns, because that's how long their game lasts before falling into obscurity. Anyone caught in the blast area must pass an engineering save each turn or lose 1d6 heat, and if they have no more heat, they are slowed instead. And if they are slowed, they are now immobilized. The conditions last as long as the target remains in the area, the area also counts as soft cover because of all the snows, and on its third turn, the area blocks line of sight completely, from anyone outside or for anyone inside. This is a rather powerful area of effect system, but you will need some weapons with firing patterns to fully take advantage of it. Cryo fist, get a load of chill out. Low damage, short threat, but again, damage didn't matter as much as its effect. On hit, the target's heat gets reduced by 1d6 plus 1, and if their heat has reduced to nothing, they are now impaired until the end of their next turn. Upon a critical hit, the target must also pass an engineering save or get immobilized until the end of their next turn. You want to get someone to stop in track, either literally or figuratively, use this. In the final section, you get hypothermal insulation and avalanche cannon. Hypothermal insulation, light and frost effect at its finest. So, this system gives you resistance to heat from any sources other than you and a temperature dice which starts at 1. When you get heat when the system is active, which it does automatically, you must roll a dice, and if the number is equal or less than the temperature dice value, the system crashes and you must repair it for it to work again. After that, add 1 to the temperature dice, 6 at max. The dice only gets reset back to 1 when a full repair is conducted, otherwise it's basically useless. This system is certainly helpful but it could only last so long. If you are worried about incoming heat, it would be helpful, but if you intend to be the focus of the enemy, you better finish your job fast because the system will be rendered useless quickly. And finally, Avalanche Cannon. It's basically a slushy cannon, long range, low damage for a heavy, blast 3 radius, but it requires loading after each shot, and is unique, though since most mech tends to not have two heavy mounts, that probably didn't matter as much. But, as with all weapons in Light and Frost license, the damage didn't matter, its effects did. Everyone within its blast radius must pass an agility save to not get knocked prone, an engineering save to not lose 2d6 heat. How it feels to chew 5 gum. And if the target has no heat left, they are slowed and impaired until the end of their next turn. The blast area also counts as difficult terrain for 1d6 plus 1 rounds, which end on your turn for the last round, if anyone on enemy side is still alive after that long that is. To simply put, avalanche cannon is exactly as its name implied, making it extremely difficult for your foes to trespass the terrain. But if you want to wipe out an entire army, use something else. As a final conclusion, Leiden Frost is a support mech that can halt enemies in place easily, cool down their allies, or it could be converted into a striker mech that takes full advantage of its ridiculous heat endurance to deliver massive damage. Its license is full of systems and weapons made to handle heat dealt to you, or to freeze the enemies in place for others to take care of it. Either way, using Leiden Frost in support or striker role works just as well as one another. But if you are looking to use Leidenfrost as a striker, take a dip in Harrison Armory license for some absurd firepower.